started the book really in 2003 and I finished it five years later and it was really quite, uh, it was perhaps the most, uh, the, the word that I would use is passionate. It was the most passionate writing experience I ever had and, and you know, uh, one, the characters just came to life and you know, at times I just transcribed what they were saying and then had to figure out how to use it all in the book. Well, the book is really in three parts. The, the first uh, section is subtitled, uh, My Life in Dr. Freud's Vienna. The second is subtitled, My New Life in the Esperanto Movement. And the third book is subtitled, My Life and Death in the Warsaw Ghetto. And I chose those three environments because they seem to me illustrative of not only the Jewish experience in, at the beginning of the century, but also just the sort of human experience uh, at the beginning of the century. You know, uh, in the 1890s, the, the science and rationalism were sort of taking hold and superstition and religion were sort of falling away. And you see that in Freud's Vienna. The curable romantic of the book title is Dr. Y.Y. Samuelson, Dr. Jakob Josef Samuelson. And I would say he's sort of an optimistic fellow, a little lovelorn, sort of looking for love, you know, and all the wrong and all the right places. When he gets to uh, Vienna, he falls in love with Dr. Freud's first analytic patient. This is, you know, from history, Emma Eckstein. There is a melding of uh, history and imagination in this book. And sometimes the line is, you know, not so clear. Uh, when, I, when I was doing research on the book, um, at one point, Dr. Samuelson gets married uh, I guess the third time, in a little synagogue in Geneva where the second Esperanto Congress was uh, happening. And I went there to actually uh, see Geneva and see the synagogue where he got married. And I was sitting there during services on Saturday morning. And I said to myself, I looked around at this beautiful synagogue and I said, I can't believe I'm really here. I, I can't believe I'm here where Dr. Samuelson got married. And then, of course, it occurred to me that Dr. Samuelson never had gotten married there, and that I was only there because I had placed his wedding there in the novel. I mean, the thing about doing a novel that relies on so much history is you really get into the research, and then you, you find out all sorts of fascinating things, and you really want to put it into the book. and then. Your wife reads a draft of the book and she says, you know, you have to take all that history out. It is boring. And so you start, you know, getting rid of it and getting rid of it. But you have to know it and you have to put it in and then you have to take it out. And at one time I was talking to a friend of mine and I said to him, you know, except for maybe one or two or three big Esperanto scholars, I probably know more about the early days of the Esperanto movement than anybody in North America. And I said, if I were a real scholar, this would be the bedrock of my entire career. But as it is, as a novelist, I'll have forgotten all this in three years. But in the end, I was quite happy with the book. I mean, I felt like in terms of fiction, it was, it just, I had just gone to places I had never gone before as a writer. And, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to finding that next project and seeing how far that will take me.